Okay, well, hello again. And uh, again, I've been too busy to do any of the usual sort of conspiracy or anti-conspiracy stuff, but I just thought I'd show you something. I've been fighting the termite war, of course, and uh, yesterday I took the day off to get some more work done, and I went to start the car, and it came up with... Uh, uh, it came up with traction control disabled, check engine, blah, 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 blah. Now, I have seen this before. And uh, on the previous occasion, I got the ODB2 reader out and uh, it said um, fuel injector number four, uh, coil open circuit. And I was expecting the same thing. The engine was running lumpy. And I thought, this is all I need. You know, I've taken a day off to do something and, and now I've got to do this. So I plugged the ODB2 reader in. And this time it didn't say anything about fuel injectors. It gave me a 7E8 code and a 7EA code, which has got something to do with the engine fuel mix, fuel air mixture. And I thought, okay, well, it feels to me exactly as it did a couple of years back when one of the fuel injectors failed. So I thought, first thing I'll do is check the fuel injectors because it's a very easy thing to do. And if it's a fuel injector, it will be a nice, easy job to do. Now this is uh, an iconic Australian muscle car. Uh, this is a, 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 an SSV. Um, the V means it's this sort of upmarket model, if you like. So it's got leather, leather seat cappings. It's also got a better hi-fi system and uh, a bigger screen, what have you. It's automatic. You can drive it in manual mode, sports mode, clutchless, um, clutchless manual. And this is like. Um, uh, the real uh, real racing cars so when you actually put it in there you can see there's a little plus there so to go up a gear and then down a gear so it's it's the same way as the uh, racing cars um, a lot of cars have it the other way around for some reason I don't quite know why anyway I couldn't find any decent information on to how to change this injector the fuel injectors the fuel injector so I I couldn't even vaguely remember how I did it before. So I thought, I'm going to make a video, and uh, I'll put it on the YouTube channel. It might come in handy for other people. But this is just a future reference for me, because I really, I really enjoy this car, and I can't... I've had it a lot longer than I thought I was going to have it anyway. I bought this car brand new, and uh, I got a six-year extended warranty with it, and I thought, well, I won't have it for six years, and I've had it for... Um, God, 11. <laughs> and I just uh, I just enjoy driving it. Um, it's got, uh, I don't know if you can see that, it says SS there. Actually, can I put the, I put the ignition on it? It probably will light up. Yeah, there you go. V8. SS. And that is the, uh, it's got nothing whatsoever to do with the SS. You have papers, yeah? Um, it's what uh, General Motors uh, put on their uh, on their muscle cars. Super Sport, you know, like um, you find the American uh, uh, the Chevrolets will have a Camaro SS, um, you know, this, that, and the other Chevelle SS. And what SS means is it's just a Super Sport version. So it's got the big V8 motor in it, and uh, this particular motor is a six liter uh, six liter V8. Uh, okay, right, now, what I was going to say was, to do this injector job, there is a, a little removable panel. I don't know if you can see that there. A little removable panel. So I'm going to go around the other side, and uh, I'm going to show you what, uh, or I'm going to show me the first thing I need to do. Because when I've got to change another one of these in a couple of years' time, I would have completely forgotten all about this. And of course the door is locked on the other side. <laughs> Okay, so we have this panel here. You can see the panel. That there slides out. And in here, if there's enough light, is there enough light? Yeah, 
I should be able to turn a light on on this camera. Can I turn a light on on this camera? Yeah, you probably can. I don't know how to do it though, but hang on a sec. There we go. Right, got a torch. Got a torch, there we go. Now this thing here... Got the torch in my mouth there. That is the fuel relay, fuel pump relay. So first thing to do is start the engine and then pull the fuel pump relay out or pull the fuel pump relay out then start the engine and it will just run until just for a I don't know 20 20 or 30 seconds just to uh, run all the fuel out of the fuel system so we're going to be mucking around with the fuel injectors and I don't want petrol spraying everywhere so that just gets the fuel out of the fuel system okay let's go around the other side I thought I'd do this video because it will help out the remote viewers. I haven't anybody, had anybody tell me what colour uh, any of my cars are yet. So, uh... <laughs> okay, so under the bonnet, this is what it looks like. It's got a pretty big V8 engine. As I say, it's a six litre V8. Now that's just a uh, beauty cover, they call them. So I'll take the beauty cover off. And now, you can see the V8 engine. Now, to do this, uh, to do this job, <coughs> to actually change a fuel injector, what you need to do is you need to take the plugs off of all the fuel injectors. There's four on each side because it's a V8. This is a part, this is a fuel rail here, and it comes over there. Another fuel rail there. So you can't just take one side off. You have to take the whole thing off. Okay, and there's. Another fuel injector there, another one there, another one there, another one there. This is the one that had failed. This is the one that I actually replaced yesterday. Um, so, <clears throat> and the way you get this out is there's a bolt there, there's a bolt there, there's a bolt there, there's a bolt there. I have to take this one out as well. These two bolts here, and this metal plate these two bolts here and this metal plate take take they'll take all those out then the fuel rails with all the injectors you can just lift out put a cloth over the top of the engine so you can sit it back down it doesn't damage the injectors so you've got to take all eight out to change one now don't do what I did take these bolts out and put them on top of here inside a roll of masking tape because when I was doing the job I knocked the masking tape off and all the bolts went down went down here so I then had to <laughs> I then had to take this air box off and uh, this uh, just touch, disconnect it from here which doesn't seem like pardon me, much of a job but it is it's an absolute bastard so that taking this air box out to recover the bolts and putting it back was a lot well was much more of a job than actually doing the fuel injector simply because of this arrangement here to get the air box out this thing's in the way and to loosen that off there's a bolt down here and it's the wrong way around you've got to get a spanner on the back of it and it was a bloody nightmare but uh, anyway the fuel injectors so this, um, on the fuel injectors themselves, there's this grey clip, yeah. which does come right off. There we 
you go. So that just pulls straight off. There's the one, that's the clip I've just taken off on the fuel injector next to it. And I've just pulled that off. So it just pulls off, comes to one point, you pull it again, it comes right off. And to actually take the plug off the fuel injector, what you need to do is squeeze that plug. So you have your thumb on that side where you've just taken the grey clip off. You just squeeze it and it unplugs. Nice and easy. But I couldn't find any decent information on how you actually take these injectors out. And uh, I was a bit reluctant initially to put some, any force on the um, on the grey clip, and then I thought oh, I'd blow it, you know. And I, then it came out, and then once I could, once the grey clip was off, I could see how the other plug was supposed to come off. Now, <clears throat> to check the injector coil, just got a multimeter here. I don't know actually how I'm going to do this because I've got two probes. I'm holding a camera and I've got a. Hang on. How can I do this? Ah. I don't know if you can see down in there. But there's two right down in there. See the two pins we're interested in? These are the two pins we're interested in. That one there and that one there. Um, I'm just going to put the multimeter across them um, and uh, hopefully, actually can I prop the camera up? Can I prop the camera up? And if I put the multimeter there like that and the camera there like that Okay, so you can see OL there, so it's open. Touch the probes together. It goes down to about 0.4 ohms. So now I'm just going to put the meter leads. I'm just going to put the meter, meter leads across those two. And of course that's in the way. I'm just going to put the meter leads across those two pins I just showed you on that injector. and it's showing 14 ohms, 13.9 ohms, something like that. And that shows it's a good injector. They're all about 13 or 14 ohms, the coils on the injectors. I can plug that back in, put the grey clip back on. <coughs> and I do have uh, This is the actual injector. This is the actual injector that came out. This one here. It did have another O-ring up the top there. And we've got the same two pins in there. You can see that. And I'm just going to put the camera back on the meter. Now what? camera back on the meter. <laughs> God. It worked once, didn't it? Okay, and you can see it says OL there, so it's open. Let's touch the probes together, get low reading. And I'm just going to put the meter on the two pins on the injector. See that, there's no change, no change whatsoever, because the coil, the coil in this injector, the coil in this injector is open circuit. So that's why the mighty Chevrolet six litre V8 engine 
uh, which which is standard in this vehicle. This is a box standard vehicle. This is how they come out of the box uh, from Holden as it was uh, back then. Uh, it was running, you know, it was running lumpy. Changed the injector. Now it runs beautifully, and uh, there's no codes or anything. But uh, do re do remember if you're looking at this and you're doing one of these. Uh, vehicles that you can get a code 7E8 and 7EA and it will be a fuel injector even though when you look it up it tells you it's a menu heading for fuel air mixture issues so bear that in mind if it runs lumpy you've got traction control stability control disconnected check engine just go around all the injectors with a, with a multimeter check all the injector coils it's a very good place to start it's a very simple job to do and once you've actually undone those bolts as I said earlier, and you've taken the fuel rails out, you've got a cloth over the engine, you've set the thing on top, changing the injector is very easy, it just pulls out the fuel rail. Oh, oh sorry, you've got to take the clip off, there's a little clip there. Just unclips like that, just ping, unclips, don't lose the clip. Pull the injector out, put the new injector in, put the clip back on, and before you put the fuel rail back in, just smear a bit of engine oil around all the O-rings on the bottom of all the injectors. A lot of people say change uh, change all these O-rings on all of the injectors. Um, I wanted the car working um, as soon as possible so when I went down to the local shop to get an injector he didn't have any O-rings so I thought okay well I'll, I'll chance it. If it doesn't run right or I see fuel squirting out once, once it's ticking over you know you sort of look along and, and see if there's any uh, any fuel squirting out around any of the injectors. Um, <clears throat> if there's any fuel squirting out around any of those injectors, then um, I'll just have to order some O-rings or go to another place and see if I can get some O-rings. But um, you know, if it runs sweet, then beautiful. So there you go. So that's a video that might help people. And hopefully, um, if I've got to do another one of these in a year or two's time, it will help me. So remember, do not put the bolts, do not put the bolts on the airbox anywhere in here. Get them right out of the way. Because if you knock them down here and they go inside the bodywork, it's a bastard to get them out. You can't get them out with a magnet because the magnet just sticks to the metal, left and right. You've got to take the airbox off and you've got to fish them out. So uh, there we go, a bit of an unusual video for, uh, from me. But uh, I just thought, uh, just thought I'd let you know that uh, you know, been a bit busy, been a bit busy, and because I couldn't find any information on how to do this bloody job anywhere, I thought uh, the next time I have to do one of these, I'll just look up my own video. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, uh, thanks for watching. If you made it, uh, if you made it this far through the video, and uh, maybe I'll catch you again.